Today, we continue covering the history of the Inveresk Mills. If you have not watched part one, now would be a good time to click the link above. This video will be covering the Stewart's Net Mill and the Brunton Wireworks. The story starts in 1812 when Colonel James Patterson, a local to Musselburgh, patented the first machine capable of tying knots for the manufacture of fishing nets. In 1820, he set up a net manufacturing firm using hemp with 18 looms in Bridge Street, Musselburgh. But by 1849, the firm and patent had been sold to James and William Stewart. In 1854, they built a new factory at Esk Mills to accommodate 100 looms and other equipment, and by 1865, they had changed from hemp to cotton for the manufacture of the nets. By 1869, the cotton and net mill had expanded to four acres and employed over 800 spinners and weavers, many of whom were women and girls, as they were cheaper to employ than men. At its height, Stewart's Mills employed over 800 people in cotton processing and rope manufacturing. The mill played a major part in the local economy and dominated the fishing net manufacturing industry for decades. The Stewarts expanded the business into a world leader within the fishing net industry, with sales and repair facilities in North America, Europe and Australia. Throughout the world, Scotch weave nets became the generic name for machine produced nets. The mill's domination of the market faltered when newer man-made materials were introduced. The company and with it the factory eventually closed in 1979. A new company, which set up nearby assembling nets from synthetic materials, bought the name J.W. Stewart because of the reputation associated with it. After the firm's relocation, the old Esk Mills building, once one of the finest examples of industrial architecture in the country, lay empty for some time, but was eventually purchased by developers and sensitively restored to become the centre of Esk Mills Park office development. The old Hayweights clock was placed on top of the tower in November 1990 and the development opened in 1991. The clock was once a feature of the 19th century Weybridge which was removed in the late 1960s to make way for the building of the Brunton Hall. We made a video about the Hayweights clock a wee while ago, and we've placed a link to it in this video's description. The Esk Mills Park Office development is made up of 400 people across more than 50 companies in a diverse range of sectors including technology, creative, finance, charity, engineering, construction and energy, along with Crolla's Italian Kitchen, an award-winning restaurant within the courtyard. Finally, we come on to Brunton's Wireworks. Unfortunately, all 22 buildings of the vast wireworks have been demolished. A large Tesco and car park occupy majority of the area with a housing development occupying the rest. It was in 1870 that WN Brunton 
a metalworks in Musselburgh known as the Sea Mill opened. It was one of the first British manufacturers to employ a high number of female workers. In 1876, John Brunton opened the Brunton Wire Works in Musselburgh. The company made specialist wires, such as piano wire. In 1888, they began making wire rope, mainly for shipping and dock use. We can have a look at how the wire rope was made by watching this archive footage from the 1930s. The raw materials enter the works in the form of steel billets, 2 to 4 inches square. They then enter a furnace and are heated to 1100 degrees centigrade. The heated billets are rolled several times until they become rods of the desired diameter. The rods are then immersed in acid to remove any scale before they are drawn into wire. When clean, the rods are washed with water, then dipped in lime to prevent rusting, then dried in an oven. The heated rods are now drawn to a predetermined gauge for heat treatment. The rods are then quenched at a fixed temperature to achieve the correct structure. The heat treated wire is cleaned again in acid before being drawn to the finished gauge. The wire is drawn continuously, several passes in one operation.
The wire is then wound on bobbins for the production of strands composing the rope. The wire is then wound onto reels for the production of strands composing the rope. The reels are fitted onto machinery which then spins the wire into strands. The strands are then transferred to a machine which produces flattened strand rope in one continuous length of 30 tonnes in weight, at the time the largest of its kind in Britain. The finished rope is then dipped into a preservative lubricant for protection against corrosion. The finished product is loaded onto transport to be delivered to the customer. And finally, the end of the working day. Time to go home. During the war years, Brunton's wire mill worked three shifts round the clock. It designed and manufactured an impressive number of cutting edge wires for the war effort. These included aircraft valve springs, bomb slings, aero cable fittings, and aircraft catapult ropes, as well as anti-torpedo nets. During this period, the Queen was a visitor at the factory. The Queen took a real interest in the work that the people were doing. She also formally opened the new canteen. This raised morale and gave the factory workers a renewed enthusiasm for their work. In 1950, the office block and part of the factory was badly damaged by fire and the financial records were lost. If it was not for the honesty of customers, the company could have faced financial ruin. In the 1960s and 70s, the wire mill supplied suspension ropes for bridges across the world, including ropes for bridges in Nigeria, Jamaica, Iceland, Norway, Zambia, Canada, Turkey and the UK, including ropes for the Humber Suspension Bridge and our own Forth Road Bridge. Across Britain, the 1980s brought recession, the result of a combination of economic problems and competition from abroad. From July 1980, some 170 employees were on short time, and the following year, 100 redundancies followed. By May 1986, 300 were made redundant, 
and that July, Bruntons was the subject of a £5 million takeover by Carclo. In 1988, Carclo PLC acquired Brunton's Musselboro Limited. There were a further 69 redundancies. In October 1991, it was announced that four of the firm's departments were to close and a quarter of the remaining workforce faced redundancy. Two years later, a further 88 lost their jobs and all wire drawing facilities closed. In 1995, the workforce was reduced to 80, and in February 1997, Brunton's finally closed. The main wire works may have closed, but Brunton Aero Products has since been created, and in 2000, they moved to a new premises at Inveresk Industrial Estate and continue manufacturing to this day. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a wee like and also subscribe to my channel by hitting the wee subscribe button. This will allow you to keep up to date with all the latest Drone Man Scotland content. If you do, well, I'll see you for the next video. Bye for now.